Hey everyone, in this video we'll go through how to approach complex electric circuit questions. When approaching these complex problems, the first thing you should do is try to identify series and parallel connections within the circuit, as breaking the circuit down into these type of connections will help you start the problem by applying the relevant physics principles and laws. And these include Ohm's law, which is V equals to I times by R, Kirchhoff's current law, which is that the current going into a junction or node in a circuit should be equal to the total amount of current that's coming out of it. So the total net current should be zero. And this is due to the conservation of charge. We also have Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states that the total voltage of components connected in a closed loop system is equal to zero. And specifically, how this relates to a circuit is that the amount of voltage that's supplied by a battery should be completely used up on charges as they go through various components in the circuits. And this is due to the conservation of energy. And finally, we have electrical power is equal to the product of voltage and current. So let's go through the first problem. Before we even read the question, let's break this circuit down into series and parallel components. So we see that there are three resistors. The first resistor, which is a 6 ohm resistor, this is connected in series to the two resistors over here. This is because we have, if we follow the conventional current that goes from the positive terminal of the battery, we can see that all of the current has to flow through the 6 ohm resistor. So it only has one path to choose from as it passes through the 6 ohm resistor. In contrast, the two 4 ohm resistors are connected in parallel. And that's because as the conventional current comes out of the 6 ohm resistor, it will reach the junction or node where the current will split off into two different currents. And the currents will then go through the two resistors before merging again into one current then returning to the negative terminal of the battery. So once you identify components, we'll try to find the total resistance of the circuits. The total resistance of the circuit will be equal to the resistance of the first resistor, that's called the R1, so it will be 6 ohms, plus the total resistance of this parallel circuit over here. So that's called the R parallel. So write down R parallel. And in this case, we are adding the two resistors together because the whole circuit is connected in series. R1 is connected in series to the parallel circuit over here. Now, as you can see, we need to first find out what the resistance of the parallel circuit is by using the second equation where we have the reciprocal of the parallel circuit resistance is equal to 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. And this gives me a value for the parallel circuit resistance of 2 ohms. And therefore, if I substitute 2 into the first equation, I will get a total resistance of 8 ohms. Once I have the total resistance, and we also have the total voltage as supplied by the battery, I can then use Ohm's law, V equals to I times by R. This is to calculate the current passing through the circuits, that is the total current. So it will be 12 volts divided by the total resistance of 8 ohms, and that gives me an answer of 1.5 amps. As we explained before, the current, that is 1.5 amps, will pass through the first resistor of 6 ohms, and when it reaches this junction, which is also the beginning of the parallel circuit, the 1.5 amp of current will split off into two. In this case, because the two resistors that are connected in parallel have the same resistance, you would expect the current of 1.5 amps to be divided evenly between them. So that means you will have 0.75 amps going through the 4 ohm resistor here, and also 0.5 amps going through here. Here, we are applying Kirchhoff's current law, where the current going into the node should be equal to the total current coming out of it. So now we've calculated the current for each resistor, 1.5 amps for the 6 ohm resistor, and also 0.75 amps for each of the 4 ohm resistors in the parallel circuit. Let's have a look at a similar example, but we are provided with different values. 
again, we have three resistors. R1 is connected to R2 and R3 series, and R2 and R3 are connected in parallel to one another. The current flowing through R1 and R2 are measured to be 2 amps and 1 amp respectively. So we have 2 amps of current flowing through R1, and we have 1 amp of current flowing through R2. The resistance of R2 is 5 ohms, as labeled in the diagram. We want to calculate the resistance of R1 and R3. By applying Kirchhoff's current law, we know that if 2 amps of current goes into this junction, which is the beginning part of the parallel circuit, and 1 amp comes out into the second resistor, this means 1 amp of current must also go through the third resistor so that a total of 2 amps of current come out of the node. We can begin this question by using Ohm's law for the second resistor to find the potential difference before and after the resistor. So this will be 1 amp of current multiplied by the resistance, which will be 5 volts of potential difference. 5 volts here refers to the fact that if you connected a voltmeter in parallel to the second resistor, you will measure a difference of potential between these two points of 5 volts. Now, we said previously R2 and R3 are connected in parallel, which means if I also measure the potential difference between these two points in a voltmeter, I should also get a reading of 5 volts. Now, let's not forget the battery supplies the total voltage for the entire circuit. So if we've used 5 volts for the parallel circuit, the remaining amount of energy would have been spent to push the charges through the first resistor. So this means if we measure the potential difference across R1, we should expect the voltage of 10 minus 5, so V1 equals to 10 minus 5, which we also get 5 volts of potential difference. Now, finding the potential difference for R1 and R3 is very important because then we can say R1 is equal to V1 divided by the current passing through it will be 5 volts divided by the current which is 2 amps and we'll get a resistance of 2.5 ohms. For R3, we use Ohm's law again, but this time we will use V3 divided by the current passing through V3. V3 is 5 volts as well, but the current is 1 amp. We'll get a resistance of 5 ohms. This concludes the video on how to approach complex circuit problems. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.